what's up guys welcome back or to the channel and today is a video I didn't think I would have to make for quite a little bit but unfortunately as you guys can see the snow is here and I know it's not that big of a deal it's not uh, the end of the world we do drive a Jeep we drive actually two Jeeps so we should be fine but the thing is my brand new Jeep, I haven't really done much rust proofing. I have done the rust proofing that comes with it from the dealership just so I can get the rust warranty and not have to worry about paying for any repairs on rust. So I have a lifetime warranty on rust on all the panels. However, they didn't really rust proof it that well. So what I think I'm gonna do is go down and winterize the Jeep myself today and get it ready. Because even though there's a, just a little bit of snow outside, but here where I live in Canada, they salt the roads like crazy. And if you guys know anything about salt, it destroys vehicles, especially uncoated vehicles. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna coat it with a fluid film and get everything ready and make sure everything is nice and sealed so we don't have any issues in the spring. And so that we can just protect everything and keep it nice and safe and pristine because it is new. So let's keep it as clean and as good as possible. And even if you have an older Jeep, like I have my older Jeep, we're gonna rust proof that as well. But I'll show you guys what you have to do on that. It's a little bit different. So let me grab all my supplies. Let's jump down there and let's start getting it ready. And you know winter's here because the cats are just sitting on the heater all day. Yeah. I wish. I wish. So I think we're going to need at least a cloth so that we can wipe everything down because it might be a little bit dirty and you don't want to be sealing dirt. I've got a couple lights so that we can actually see what we're doing and <clears throat> excuse me what I will be using today is the Worth film. It is basically the same as any fluid film or any of those uh, like film products. This is just the Worth brand. I got this from work and this is what I'll be using today. I will tell you guys, if you don't have uh, an actual like company or an industrial account or like a business, it will be hard to get Worth chemicals. That's why I'm saying you guys can use basically anything, whether it be the fluid film or any other brand that is pretty much the same product. It's an anti-corrosion film. This stuff doesn't dry. It actually stays wet and it doesn't drip either. So it's actually a really good protectant against moisture and salt. It doesn't wash off that easy either, so you should be able to wash your vehicle a few good times. I think probably around 15 to 20 times, as long as you're not actually scrubbing it. And when you do want to actually get it off, a quick wipe gets it off. So in the spring, when you want to get it off and you don't want all the dirt sticking to it when you're driving around, you can give it a quick wipe and it'll come right off. But for the winter time, we're going to leave it on. And if we do go to wash it, we're just going to make sure we don't get too close with the pressure washer and we should be good. So now I'm going to grab all my stuff. Let's go downstairs and let's start on the Jeep. And my creeper so that I don't have to be walking around on my knees the entire time. Now, set up one light already right here. I'm going to set up a couple lights underneath and basically get rid of <clears throat> all of this dirt. So I did wash it recently, but it's been wet outside. So there is a bunch of spray all over it. Now what we're going to do is wipe everything down, make sure that there's no rust anywhere. If there is rust anywhere, we'll take care of it by sanding it real quick and spraying it with some black paint. And then I'm going to hit everything with the film, the uh, Worth film. And the last one I'll have with me so that I can see exactly what's going on in case I have any spots I cannot see. Now let's wipe everything down. And we don't have to go crazy, but you can see we just want to get all the dirt off so that we're not sealing it in when we spray it. But you can see how easily it all comes off. Quick wipe and that's it. So I'm going to finish this off and we'll catch up in a minute. Now we have everything cleaned and wiped off 
and we're ready to coat everything with our fluid film. And you can pretty much coat everything under there from your floors to your frame, control arms, axles, everything except for your exhaust and your brakes basically. So yeah, let's get at it and let's get it done. So the good news is this stuff covers super well. As you can see, I've used less than a whole can and I've pretty much got this entire side covered. And it does dry clear, so it doesn't stay this like white milky color, but it does help you see where you've already gotten it. And you'll see it does end up drying clear. Like when you have the light on it, you can still kind of see it but it does go away. So let's keep going, let's finish it off and I'll show you guys the end result. Man, this shit was leaking everywhere. I am happy to be done and get this glove off. All right, now I gotta clean myself off cause I kind of crawled under there at one point and now I'm all lubed up. So give me a second. All I really got, better than nothing. I'm gonna have to go clean up anyway after this and probably take a shower, so it is what it is. But let's see my work. So you can see I coated. So I used all four cans and I coated everything from the frame to all the bolts, everything, including getting it inside all of the holes in the frame. I did the entire front here, around the shocks, around the springs, the front, the sway bar, the track bar, the axles. Everything in here is covered. Sway bar links. So basically, anywhere where we have metal or a bolt or anything that's exposed got covered. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is cracking. So now I'm gonna let it dry for a bit. And then what we're actually gonna have to do is go for a drive because obviously we got a little bit on the exhaust here and there. So we're gonna have to go and let it burn off. But for now, I'm gonna let it kind of cure and let it sit for a bit so that it does its thing and kind of settles before we go for a drive. So now we've got everything coated let's move on to the next step but before actually before we move on to the next step what would we do for my older jeep well the reason that i'm not doing the fluid film is because i went a little bit of a different route what i did on this one was a gravel guard and you can see this is the gravel guard and it's basically the same as like a uh a bed liner it's very similar to a bed liner except the bed liner has a lot more of a texture. It's a lot grainier and a lot thicker of a texture. This is more of like a, like a sandpaper, but either way, it protects really great. 
and I've done my bumpers in it. I've done all of my rebar or crossbar. I've done all of my uh, frame. I've done all the inside of the wheel wells. I know it's a little bit hard to tell, but those are all coated in that stuff and it holds up really, really well. So I have basically everything in here coated from the frame to the skid plates, under the body, everything. So I'm not really worried about this one and she uh, needs a little bit of a wash, but I will be using this for off-roading very soon. So I don't think I'm gonna be washing it just yet. And I don't wanna spoil it, but we will be going to a pretty awesome trail. So definitely if you wanna see this thing in action, jump down there, hit that subscribe button because I will be taking it out soon. But getting back to getting winter ready. The next thing is a battery booster or a set of cables. Now I prefer these guys because you are self-sufficient. You don't have to wait for another vehicle or if you go to help another vehicle, you don't need to actually get two vehicles out and have both vehicles sitting there. You can do it with just this. And the awesome part about this is you also get like a flashlight, SOS light, strobe, and a power bank. So this one you can actually charge things with, whether it be your cell phone or a GPS or whatever you need to charge, you can charge things off of this and boost your car. So I always make sure that once a month I bring it inside and I charge it just to make sure that it's all charged up. Some people like to leave it plugged in in their vehicles. I like to take it home, charge it up once a month. That way I know it's good to go and then I put it back in my vehicle. So that is a great addition for anybody that has any vehicle, not just a Jeep. The next thing that I always bring with me in the winter is a light because it's always dark out. So if you wanna go and help somebody, you might need a light, good to have. I also bring a, oh, it opens up this way. This is a shackle receiver. So you put this inside of your receiver in your hitch and you've got yourself a tow, tow point. Uh, this thing obviously has hooks because it's a Rubicon, but if you have a truck or a pickup or an SUV that doesn't have tow hooks on the back, this is awesome. So this is actually here because I'm gonna possibly need to put it in another vehicle to pull them out. So this is here for that. It's also here if I need to go off road and I need to get pulled out myself. I've also got recovery straps. I do want to add a couple of uh, kinetic ropes. I don't have kinetic ropes, but I do have recovery shackles and stuff like that in this bag. So we are good to go. And if we need to get anybody out of a situation, I do have a couple of tools in here as well. So it is nice to have a quick to go bag and have some tools and some straps. <laughs> Excuse me guys, sorry, I'm working in my underground garage here, doing the best I can. But we basically have our straps, a couple tools, a light, just bare minimum to get us by, and some gloves. That's one thing I need to throw in here that I haven't thrown in here yet because I don't use them during the summer, but I need to throw in some gloves. And last, but probably not least, will be the tires. Now, these are brand new, these are Rubicon tires, so they are the Falcon Wild Peak All Terrains. I did not opt for the actual mud terrains for one simple reason. These ones are three peak snow rated, so I know that I'll be able to drive in my winters here in Canada and not worry. Now, there are mud tires that are good in the snow, such as what I have on my TJ. These have quite a lot of siping, and if you don't know what siping is, it's these like cuts and grooves in the actual tire that give you that extra bit of bite when it's on the actual, like the, the part that's uh, in contact. So when these get to the bottom, they open up and they actually grip pretty well. So I have to say, these are really good in the snow compared to a lot of other mud tires I've used. These are a Super Swamper Truxis mud and snow or mud terrain, yeah, these are mud terrains. Sorry, not a mud and snow, just a mud terrain, but the siping helps a lot. And you can see these are the three peak rated and they have tons of siping everywhere. So these are gonna be great. I haven't tried them in the snow yet, but now that we've coated everything, I think we'll be ready to go. 
And I think that's about gonna cover it. But one more thing that I will mention about driving in the winter or getting your vehicle winter ready is always make sure you have your windshield washer topped up because you don't wanna be stuck on the highway and not be able to see. Trust me, I have been there. And always make sure that you keep your vehicle topped up. This guy over here just lost his fuel gauge. <laughs> so I don't know how much fuel is in it. So I always make sure I fill it up before I go anywhere. But even when you have a newer vehicle like this, always make sure you have it full, at least halfway, because if you get stuck somewhere or if you get into a situation where you have to be out for longer than you expected, you don't want to run out of fuel. Trust me, I have been there as well. <laughs> so. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for watching the video today. I know it's a bit of a shorter one. I will be making some longer videos soon and I will have more Jeep content for you guys. So if you enjoy Jeep content or you wanna see this thing go off road or this thing go off road, then definitely jump down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys wanna see and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then guys, ride safe out there. Peace.